the pool for the same question number five that start with part D, state how many protons are present in an atom of element F. State the name of element as well. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, um, I'm done. So your answer is? So the number of protons are 82. And what exactly did you did, uh, did you do to get that answer? I just plus the values. Good, great, moving on. And, and the state of an element is uh, lead. Lead, great. Yeah. Okay, so last part. Part H, element G, has one more electron than element B, okay? So, draw a diagram to show how the electrons are arranged in an atom of G. Oh, okay, okay. Um, one sec. I should do this sh these shells or I can just say in the numbers like in the first shell the second shell and third shell we can do the latter that's fine yeah okay okay I know you can draw the shell easily so just telling me the numbers is good enough for me So shall we start? How many there are in first shell? One second. Um, not getting this one. So let's go with this one. This is the configuration for B. All right. If there is one more electron, there are two possible options that you can go with either two, eight, and then eight plus one, nine, or two, eight, and then leave the cell like this and add one electron to the next cell. So which of these yeah. configurations do you think is correct? The second one. Second one. So would you be able to draw a diagram for this one? Yeah. Like first shell, two electrons, and then second shell, yeah, yeah, eight yeah. electrons, so on and so forth. That's about it. That's what they have asked. So they told you that this is the configuration for G. 
and then yeah. you have to draw a G like this, so on and so forth with the third shell and the fourth shell. There you go. If you didn't draw it like this, you're correct. Good enough? Yeah. All okay. right. Moving on. Let's see. Um, question number six. Predict two properties of element palladium. The atomic number is 46, so the symbol is PD. The properties can either be physical or chemical. Now, a little bit of hint. All the periodic mm -hmm. table elements are divided into two categories, metal yeah. and non-metal. Yeah. If it's the left of the periodic table, it's metal. If it's the extreme right part of the periodic table, it's non-metal. And yes. you just need to check whether it's a metal or a non-metal, then go on forward with telling two properties, whatever that is. And there you go. You're done with the question. Good and sound. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna go back to a few pages where we can actually oh. see the periodic oh. table. So this was the bifurcation. It's metal, great. So if it's metal, can you come up with two properties that uh, are the general properties of metal? Okay. Um, they're uh, ductile. Very good. That's second, the first one. Second, what about the second one? Okay. Um, then um, they are a good um, conductor of heat and electricity. Great. You actually yeah. told me three properties instead of two, and that's very good. Okay. So I know more move... of the Great, that's better. Okay, let's keep moving on with the questions. Now, we have helium and neon to not form any compound. We're supposed to mm -hmm. explain why the noble gases are unreactive. I, I know this one. Great, then go ahead. Okay, so uh, the noble gases are unreactive because they're like they're uh, what they'll say, the uh, the last shell or the outer shell is like full, so there is no more like uh, like uh, they can't um, what they'll say, uh, gain more. Great, so the okay, outer like shell is complete, so they can't gain more electrons, or they don't want to lose, or they don't want to share any more electrons. So they do not exchange mm. electrons at all, right? Mm. And that's a pretty yeah. great answer. That's actually the right answer. All right, uh, I guess this is the last question of this exercise. Then we're gonna move on to the past paper practice to make sure that you're good yeah. enough with it. So question number eight is the elements in the periodic table are arranged in the order of atomic number. Mm. If they were arranged in the order of mass number, give the names of two elements that would be in different positions, explain why this would cause a problem. Now, in order to get the question right, I am going to move all the way down to the periodic table page. Yeah. And I'm going to explain the question to you a little bit more so that it's easier for you to solve the whole thing. Now you already probably know that the PI table is arranged from left to right with the help of atomic numbers, starting from the smaller atomic number to the bigger one, okay? And yeah. if we don't arrange it with the help of atomic number, if we arrange it with the help of mass numbers, which is the other number written next to it, mm -hmm. then what would happen? Which two elements can exchange their positions and why? Would that be bad for, here is the periodic table. It's page number 320. All right, I guess I'm close. Yeah. Yeah, this one is the periodic table and I'm gonna rotate the view. There you go, you can see the whole thing, okay. Now, since you very much understand that uh, atomic number is the smaller number and it's written right below the name. This one is the atomic number and the one written above is the mass number. Now, you yeah. are supposed to find two elements for which the mass numbers are not increasing. 
For example, if you take a look at these math numbers, 11, 12, 14, 16, 19, 20, they are increasing in the right way. You need to find yeah. two consecutive elements for which the first one has the greater atomic mass than the second one. In order to prove that this, if this was placed differently, the whole periodic table will not make sense. Not at least with the, those two elements. Yeah. Mm. Okay, go ahead. Try going through the whole periodic table. Try finding those elements. Okay. Remember, the elements have to be consecutive, right next to one another. Mm, okay. So the mass number of the that element should uh, be greater than the first element should be greater. Like this one is eleven, this one is twelve. If this one was twelve and this one is, was eleven, this would mm. definitely uh, been have been able to exchange places, and then the whole periodic table wouldn't make sense. At least not those two groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That is not... Okay, I'm, I think this one, but I'm not sure. 
fine, give it a try. Let me know what you have on mind. No, it's actually wrong. It can be down also, like the... Uh... Able to get it. Okay, let's go through the entire chart. Yeah, well, one, four, of course, four speakers, that's fine. Seven, nine, eleven, twelve, forty, sixteen, nineteen, twenty, nothing uh, odd so far. Twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-five, uh, point five, forty, thirty-nine. These two, if thirty-nine was placed over here, if K was here and AR over would have been here, the entire periodic table won't make sense because a non-metal would be in the place among metals and a metal would be among the place of non-metals. Let's keep going on. If this is 63.5 and this is 65, if this comes over here, this goes over there, that doesn't make sense. Moving on, if we keep going on in the similar way, you would find uh, these two, right? My bad. So if iodine was air here and Te was here, these two won't make sense because then iodine would have seven electrons out of all the elements that are having six electrons in their outermost shell. This one would have seven. And out of all the elements which have seven electrons in their outermost shell, D would have six. So that wouldn't have mm -hmm. made sense, right? If we keep yeah. going on, you'll find this, a couple of more examples similar to the ones that I've just told you, and there would have been a problem. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Right? Great. Yeah. So you may quote A, R, and K. You may quote Z, N, and C, U. You may quote T, E, and I. You may quote any pairs like that. Yeah. It shouldn't make sense which if the position was exchanged would pose a problem to the symmetry of the periodic table. Mm -hmm. I guess okay. now it's a little bit more clear than it was previously, right? Yeah. Good, good. All right, so I'm gonna clear all of this up. Sorry about that, the whole book has been inverted. So actually, uh, the, the thing I want to emphasize at right now is this specific table. Take a look at this table. Now protons, neutrons, and electrons. Proton and neutron have the same mass and electron have a very small mass as compared to mm -hmm. proton and neutron. You'd yeah. notice that it is uh, given in, in even a smaller value. The one is divided by a big number, one is four zero which gives us the idea that the electrons are the lightest one in mass. And in order to emphasize on the same fact, they have written the word negligible next to it. So when we are calculating the masses, we're actually uh, just counting the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. We do not uh, go for electrons. When we talk about the charges, the proton is, has a plus one charge, neutron has no charge, it's uncharged or it's actually neutral and the electron has a negative one charge. When we discuss the mm. location in atoms, protons and neutrons exist inside the nucleus, while electron exists outside the nucleus in the shells or orbits or energy levels, what we have been calling them. 
and they revolve in those levels around the nucleus. So that's how we define the basic properties of subatomic particles, protons, electrons, and neutrons. And the question you were just facing actually wanted you to do the same. Oh, okay. okay. Got it now. Yeah. So this, is, this was the one that I wanted to talk to you about. You would understand that all the questions are actually from the exact same portion. Yeah. Okay. Now, all of yeah. these questions would make sense, smallest mass or negative charge or uh, inside or outside the nucleus, all right? Yeah. So we're gonna keep moving on. And no, let's simply erase these and let that diagram sit along with you during the time you solve these. So let's talk about part four. Part four, right? D four. Okay. Uh, uh, items are equal number of equal number of electrons and protons. Great. Number five then. Uh, the element proton drone drone has isotopes. These isotope isotopes have different number of uh, Among the three subatomic particles, proton, neutrons, and electrons, what uh, number is exactly different in the isotope? Are these electrons? Are these protons? Are these neutrons? That's what the question is about. So which number is different? Uh, it's on neutrons. Neutrons, great. It's neutrons. The number of neutrons is different for different isotopes. That's good. All right, I'm gonna zoom out a little. Now you know, don't need this diagram. Let's start with question number two. They have okay. shown the group numbers on the top. They have shown certain set of elements and they want you to just consider these elements as answers to the question. And the questions can also be general. Okay, so starting with part A, complete the following sentence. Go ahead. The, the element in the periodic table are arranged in the order of, um, they're arranged in the order of, um, I think the number of electrons. No, that's not how we quote it. There are actually two numbers written on the each periodic uh, or each element or the periodic table. One of them is the atomic number, the other one is mass number. Now, which one among these is used to arrange the order of periodic table for elements in the periodic table? Is that the atomic number or is that the mass number? We have discussed this real recently as the last question of the end of chapter exercise when we were doing it from the book. And we were saying if it wasn't arranged by the specific number, Can you hear me now? Yeah. Sorry, disconnected for a while. And can you see the paper as well? Yes. Good, good. So actually, it's in uh, the elements in, are arranged in the order of increasing, means it increases from left to right, atomic number. We just discussed that if it 
it wasn't atomic number it was mass number that they have would have been mistake in the periodic table that was the last question of your end of chapter questions in the book right so that's increasing yeah. atomic number all right let's quickly try and solve part b mm. uh, name an element shown in the diagram that is metal like in in this diagram right the one given on the top oh yeah okay um it it can be put potassium great what about the second part uh a uh, halogen means a member of group 7 oh okay mm, group 7 it can be uh bromine great so uh anything among the metal would have worked whether you uh, would have answered as sodium or potassium mm -hmm. both can be the correct answer and any mm -hmm. among fluorine fluorine and bromine can be the correct answer for the second part right yeah. so since you yeah. chose bromine you were correct since you chose potassium you were correct with both parts mm -hmm. irrespective of the order right now yes. i'm going to clear all of it 